Okay, we have our camera. Its origin is centered on the world's origin, and the two coordinates are perfectly aligned. The two coordinate systems, the world and the camera's coordinate system, are perfectly aligned. The camera is looking down the negative z axis, and in this situation, we're going to see the side of this cube. I think I'll rotate the cube. Oh, that's the wrong rotation. I'll rotate the cube around the x-axis just to make the scene a little more interesting. If I fix our eye to the camera's position, this camera's position, then we'll see what the camera sees. We've done that in previous videos. Anyway, we have this this view vector. It's pointed down the negative z. The next thing I want to accomplish is to be able to rotate this view vector around the y-axis depending on where the mouse goes in the two-dimensional space. For example, if we're looking at the scene as the camera sees it, and I move my mouse to the right, I would expect the camera to rotate to the right, to look over here instead of looking here. Same thing if I turn or move my mouse to the left, then I would expect the camera to look over here, unless you like inverted controls and like it backwards. It doesn't really matter. As I move the mouse on the horizontal, I would expect the camera, its view direction, its view direction to rotate depending on how I turn the mouse. That's kind of a off the center rotation, but hopefully you get the idea. Let's look at our scene again from the bird's eye view. Here's our view vector. As I move the mouse back and forth on the two-dimensional screen space, I want this vector to rotate depending on which way I move my mouse. To accomplish this isn't that hard. We already have an up vector, a perfect up vector in the y direction. We have this view vector. The tails of the two vectors are at the origin, like so. So all I need to do is use GLM's rotational functions to rotate the white vector around our red up vector. And that's how we're going to accomplish that in code. We also need to detect the mouse movements on the GUI window, and we'll subscribe to those events and, and do these calculations accordingly. So let's go back to our code. So we need a function we can call every time that the mouse moves, and that will cause our camera to move accordingly. So let's add one void mouse update. Update. And let's take a const glm vec2 reference new mouse position. We're using a vector2 because the screen space is only two-dimensional space. Let's go implement this function in the camera.cpp. And I believe, oh, let's get rid of this GL window for now. The This function is kind of the last one that's important. So I'm actually going to textually put it down here. And I'm going to follow suit in the compilation unit as well. Void mouse update, camera, camera. And we should be good to go. We need to track we need to track the old mouse position. For example, if this is our window and my mouse is right here and I move it to right here, we need to know the distance or the delta that we moved it, which would be another two-dimensional vector in the screen space. Your mouse is here, you jump to here, so this is your mouse delta. Well, the only way to keep track of that delta is by keeping track of the old position and we'll assume the old position was just in the center of the screen. We'll go back here and say GLM vec2 old mouse position. Save that. And then at the end of the mouse update, we want to keep track of the uh, new mouse position as the old mouse position because we will... Man, it's hard to... <laughs> it's hard to type and talk at the same time because there, we're, we, we shall call this function every time that the mouse moves and so the camera needs to keep track of the old mouse position every time we need the mouse delta vector glm vec2 mouse delta that's how much the mouse has moved that will be our new mouse position minus our old mouse position. So when I say mouse delta dot x, that's how much the mouse moved on the horizontal. If I say mouse delta dot y, that's how much the mouse has moved on the vertical. We're not going to worry about the vertical vertical quite yet. We'll just worry about the horizontal or the x. So all that's left to do 
is make a rotation matrix, apply it to the view direction, and then reassign the view direction. So view direction gets DLM rotate. Let's go down to the third overload. This third overload takes an angle in degrees and the vector to rotate around. So for now, we'll just say rotate mouse delta dot x. That's the, that's the angle I want to rotate around, so I'll have to move the mouse 90 pixels before I get a 90 degree turn. We can adjust this or scale this. We'll play with that later once we get it working on the screen. And then the vector I want to rotate around is the up vector that we created. And then let's apply that matrix to our view direction. So essentially we're taking our view direction, we're rotating it, and then assigning the result back to the view direction. So the view direction will just go round and round round and round. We're getting this issue because view direction is a VEC3, rotate returns a matrix 4, so this needs to be a vector 4. However, if you go look at my game engine programming playlist, hint, hint, you'll know that rotation can be done with just a 3x3 three three matrix, and I can convert a 4x4 four four matrix to a 3x3 three three matrix, which I think might be a little cleaner. I don't know, I'll let you debate that. Maybe I should change this to a vector 4 and then change it back to a vector 3. I could do either approach, but I'm going to do the matrix 3 approach. I can pass a matrix 4 to matrix 3, and this will simply cut off the extra row and column. Do the multiply, and that will rotate our vector for us. And then we'll just keep track of the old mouse position and this view direction when we use it down here to get the world to view matrix. That will actually rotate the world for us. So let's go to our GUI window and actually call this function every time the mouse moves. Go to me GL window. Protected void mouse move event. I believe it takes a Q mouse event like so. Copy this. Go to our GL window. Where did I put that? After the paint GL. So let's see if we can find paint GL. Put that right there, me GL window, colon, colon, bring that back. We need to pound include Q mouse event. So I'll go to the top of the window here and pound include QT slash Q mouse event. No IntelliSent support because the file does not have a dot H at the end of it. Control minus, control home, QT, GUI, Q mouse event. Good. Control minus, control minus a few times to get back to where we were at. And we need E here. Now I just say camera dot mouse update glm vec2 E X E Y. We should be good to go. And then after we've recalculated our mouse movement, we need to repaint the scene. So let's hope this works. Control F5. And it's not working. I think we need to do set mouse tracking. Where's initialize GL? Set mouse tracking, please. Yes, do track the mouse. Try that again. And it's not working. Let me pause the video, figure out why. Stupid me, we send this data down and store it in the OpenGL buffer for the instancing. We saw the instancing in previous videos. But we only do it once. We only do it at the beginning of the program. Now our mouse is updating. We need to send this data down every single frame. So we can still do the vertex of trip calls here and enable a trip. We can do all that still, but we need to send this data down every single frame. So I'm going to copy all this. And then I'm going to control shift L L L L L L to delete all of that. Uh, size of full transforms this is a little little bit hackish, but I'm going to say it's size of mate four times two. Nice magic number. And then I'll pass zero in. And what this means is yes, create the buffer with this amount of bytes, but I'm not going to send you the data down quite yet. I'll send you the data down later, and I'll send the data down quite often. The data will change frequently. It will be dynamic, so don't make an optimization based off static, meaning I'll only send it down once. We need to tell OpenGL we will change that data quite often. Let's go back to the PaintGL, and right here looks like a good place to do it. GL buffer data, change this to dynamic draw 
and now we're sending the data down every single frame. I believe I showed you GL buffer sub data previously, and I could use buffer sub data, but since the amount of data I'm sending down is the exact s number of bytes I sent down before, then I can just reuse GL buffer data, and we should be good to go. Control F5, and there you go. Look at that, our camera is rotating. I move the mouse to the right, it pushes the scene to the right. Move the mouse left, it pushes the scene to the left. That's probably inverted from what you're used to. That's easy to fix. We just go back to our camera code. And on the mouse delta, we just negate this. That'll invert the controls. So I move my mouse to the left. I feel like the camera's turning to the left. I move my mouse to the right. Feels like my camera's moving to the right. It's actually moving quite quickly. Look how little I have to move my mouse to turn the scene. I could adjust that by scaling this, maybe timesing it by 0 0.5. Ideally, if you're making a game or something, you wouldn't just be slamming magic values here. You'd have them off in some configuration file or some way that the user could control in a menu or something. Say, I don't want it to speed around that fast. So anyway, let's. this will do half the speed. You can see I need to move my mouse further to get that effect. So there you go. There's rotation on the horizontal to get the world to go back and forth. Uh, using the mouse. Now we needed to get the vertical. We also need to allow our camera to fly around the scene as well. We'll do that in the future videos.